the reason why I keep scoring. Let's see it together right now. Let's see why. Our microphones are messed My up. My free prize okay. this month to say happy holidays. Happy Super holidays. Good happy, holidays. Happy, happy holidays, everyone. Welcome to the happy Wolf Den Podcast. The Italian lady <laughs> over here. Uh, uh, welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast, guys. It's a bit of a, a bit of a wacky one today. Yeah, I, my mic keeps moving on its own. Look, look, look. I fixed mine. Uh, Figure yours out. How, how does? All right, you want? I'll do what I did in mine. I put this little cup holder. I don't thing. think it's that though, because no, it is. It is because it's not level. Okay. I'm telling you, watch. All right. Watch what we do. All right, but if I get like. You know, rings on this little yeah. table of yours. I don't care about this little table. Oh, oh, oh. Always good to be building our set in the middle of the show. There we go. Okay. Just like that. And then we do this. Also, I have little furniture sliders down here, and that kind of prevents it from rotating. Yeah. A bit, but there you go. Okay. And it is. Oh, All right, look at that. All right, hi guys. Welcome hey, everybody. To the podcast where things never go wrong. No, uh, we got a lot to talk about today. I, also, this freaking mic is in my face, and I don't like it. And I can't even <laughs> see you. There's like a lot of layers. Yeah, us right now. Why are we bad at this? I don't know. Uh, anyway, thanks for being here. Thank you, LJWVU, for the uh, 17 months. Wow, 17 oh. months of Wolf Den goodness. Happy Tuesday, Wolf Bros. Happy, Happy Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, Cosmic Kane, Cosmic Anime. Thanks for the Prime and Jeffrey Sorensen. Thanks for the twenty-one months. Using my free Prime sub this month to say Happy Holidays. Sup, Wolf Bros. Hello. Hi. Hey, Happy Holidays. Uh, what else did I want to say? Uh, oh, we're doing a giveaway. Every, Ooh. every time I stream on Twitch for the month of December, I'm doing a giveaway because. I'm supposed to be doing a sponsorship, uh -huh. but I haven't done it yet. Okay. So I feel bad that I've said that I'm going to do a giveaway <laughs> in December. And, and it's December. And it's and December, we're on and we still haven't done the giveaway. So I'm just giving, I'm just, I'm just spending my money. Okay. So uh, if you're on Twitch Live, uh, you, if you type an exclamation point giveaway, I hope you will get entered into a uh, giveaway. I haven't actually checked to see if it's working. It's not. <laughs> did anybody do it oh boy uh we're gonna pretend like we've done this before yeah uh everyone's doing exclamation point giveaway yeah it hasn't it, 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 i i did a thing that might have made it uh not work <laughs> try it now try it now so people do it do do it again if you've done it already do it again I don't, I don't, I don't know what the hell's wrong with this stupid thing. We'll figure it out. But anyway, uh, I'll let you know when it's back up and running. We'll give, we'll do the giveaway at ten. Hopefully, it'll work. Um, and we'll be giving away a hundred dollar eShop, Amazon, or Steam gift card because that's just the easiest thing yeah. to do. Anyway, uh, we got a lot to talk about today. I want to talk about uh, the uh, Panda Global stuff that happened. Yeah, uh, so we talked about it a little bit last week and. Uh, a lot more came out almost immediately after the podcast. Yes. So from both Nintendo and Panda Global with regards to the Smash Brothers tournament, they stamped out. Yeah, Nintendo kind of acted a little nefariously and Panda acted a little more nefariously. Yes. Uh, there's a lot more information we have to talk about there. Some bad actors going around. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to talk about Xbox Finally yes. raising the price price of their first yes. party game. It's uh it's a bigger deal than I think people uh think it is. Yes. And also, uh Pokemon got a patch. Yeah. <laughs> uh So but, the game's good now. Oh, of course. But before we talk about any of that stuff, you wanna go through those PlayStation Plus games we're getting? Or, yeah. or I guess is it PlayStation Premium? It's no, it's um it's still PlayStation Plus. Oh, so these are still free games. These are the free games, no matter what um, what tier of PlayStation Plus you have, uh, essential, extra, or premium. Okay. You're going to get these games. Okay. While you do that, I'm going to try to fix this giveaway. Okay. Uh, so, of course, December has started, and uh, PlayStation and Microsoft, we didn't forget about you, even though you forgot about you, uh, like to give away free games if you're subscribed to either PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold. Uh, we start with PlayStation because they still give a shit. 
about giving you free games. Uh, and this month is a doozy, ladies and gentlemen. So first up, um, all these games are available starting today. Um, on PS4 and PS5, you get Divine Knockout, the Founders Edition. Um, you get Biomutant, uh, which, do you remember that? That was like a cult hit, like yeah. almost immediately. So now's your chance to play it. And probably the big one is the uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. That is all three Mass Effect games plus all the DLC. Did you fix the giveaway? The giveaway works. Exclamation point giveaway. If you do it more than once, though, you're banned from the chat forever. <laughs> it's just a glitch that happens. So if you yeah. do it more than once, you're just banned forever. Uh, but yeah, no. Everybody do it right now. Yeah. Let me look at this. Oh, I forgot my mouse. Let me look at this PlayStation Plus thing we got going on. Okay. Uh, it's, so, it's, so Mass Effect Legendary Edition, is that a collection? Or yeah, that's the collection. That's all, that's the original trilogy. Uh, Mass Effect, Mass Effect 2, Mass Effect 3, plus all of the DLC. Oh my god. Well, so this game. month, instead of getting three games like you normally get, you're getting five games. <laughs> my good lord. Yeah. Um, And then there's Biomutant, which like we said, like when that game came out, like that was like... Everybody was talking about it. It's the game with the... Is that a cat? That is... I'm going to say yes. <laughs> Nobody correct me. A well-rendered animal that's not supposed to be bipedal. Yes. Uh, uh, that's that PS4, PS5 game. Yeah, everyone yeah. went crazy for that game. It looked like just a regular old third-person yeah. action game to me. Well, that was... You remember that game, Kenya Bridge of Spirits? No. Yes, it, it yeah, was like a Pixar game. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. not it was like just, just a run of the mill, middle of the road like action adventure game, and everyone's like, "Yo, Kenya Bridge, Bridge of Spirits is like incredible." Well, that had a really nice art style. It did. This just looks like photorealism. Yeah, but it's a, it's a Mad Max looking cat. Yeah. Uh, anyway, and um, the other, the final game, Divine Knockout Founders Edition. This is debuting in PlayStation Plus. This is a debut game. Oh, oh Divine Knockout. I don't know anything yeah. about this. I hope this doesn't play and, and, and have audio. It is, is a, a fighting game. It's like a multiplayer. Um, yeah, like a multiplayer battle arena game. Uh, okay, interesting. Yeah. A kind of like, uh, what's that wrestling one everybody's playing? I don't know. There's a wrestling one that everybody's playing right now. Oh, this has like abilities and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Hey, for the giveaway, you don't need to be added by the robot. You'll be <laughs> you'll be fine. You just do the exclamation point giveaway one time and you're automatically entered. Don't worry about it. Trust in technology. Um, so Divine Knockout and Biomune are available for PS4 and PS5. Uh Mass Effect Legendary Edition is the PS4 version. I don't think there is a PS5 version of it. Uh, but you can play it on your PS5 if you have one. I don't. But I can play all these games anyway. That's good. Yeah. Uh, bi I'm interested to see what Biomune, like the comparison between PS4 and PS5, because that seems to be... Uh, according to game. this description, the PS5 version features native 4K and HDR support and three different graphics modes. Whoa. Yeah. I'm not playing any of these games, Will. Yeah, I know. Uh, what has Xbox got? Oh, boy. Oh, no, dude. <laughs> not a good month. Starting uh, for the whole month, you get Cult Canyon. And... Wow. From the 16th to January 15th, you get Bladed Fury. Cool, dude. I mean, Bladed Fury doesn't look terrible. Are you sure about that? <laughs> I can't even see what it looks like. What is that box art? Oh, it's a woman with her back turned? I can't I can't even tell. Well, watch it. Did you see the video of it? No. Okay. Is there a video at the top? There usually is. No, there is none. Wow. It, it, it's, wow, they really don't they care really anymore. They really do not care at wow. all. Wow. Okay. Okay, this 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 looks All right, give me gameplay. Give me gameplay. <laughs> Jesus. No, this doesn't this doesn't look good. Okay, maybe I'm thinking of a different game. This doesn't game. look good. This looks like a flash game. <laughs> Although it's my type of game. Yeah. But it's not it's not not the best looking, not the easiest on the eyes. No, I, I mean, games don't have to be good looking to be good. That's not true. <laughs> I think, I unfortunately, 
you, it's easy to overlook a game if it's just ugly. Yeah. You know, what was the last ugly game that you loved? You know? That I loved. Tetris? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't think that's fair. Because, like, Tetris is, like, intentionally simple. Yeah. I'm, like, an ugly game... Ugly games usually... Uh... Mortal Kombat 11 on Switch. Okay. All right. I'll give you that because that's just... <laughs> that game was ugly. Uh, yeah. being on the Switch it has some problems. But, like, it ran fine. It, like, was... It was locked at 60. It played just as well as the other version. It just looked terrible. Yes. Yes. Xbox just does not care anymore. No. Do, it... do we have... Uh, uh... Any new games coming to PlayStation Plus Premium? Uh, so they don't announce the um, the games that are coming to premium, uh, extra and premium until like the middle of the month. Oh, so we already sucks. talked about some yeah. of the we were getting? Okay. So uh, I know Game Pass, I didn't put it in, but we're getting uh, Eastward, the final season of The Walking Dead. Uh, the big one is Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga. Oh, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Did we get that on PlayStation Plus? Because I, I heard that already. I think it's also on PlayStation Plus, yeah. <laughs> Um, I did remember talking about that. Yeah. Yeah, the big one is um this is Lego Star Wars the Skywalker saga. Also Battlefield 2042 if you want to play bad Call of Duty. <laughs> 2042, that's the new one. Yeah. Okay. Uh people in the chat are saying Vampire Survivors is a great ugly game. And that might be true cuz that's like a lot of people's favorite game this yeah. year and it is pretty ugly. Yeah. That one's a shock. Yeah. I don't know how that got this Actually as it is. What's um what's that game I played at PAX that was intentionally built in the Quake One engine in twenty in the year of our Lord twenty nineteen? Well, that's a stylistic. Choice. Yeah, uh, Iron Maiden or something. No, that was the Duke Nukem engine. Oh my god, <laughs> I don't rem- I don't remember the name. Yeah, I- Ion Maiden, which they changed to Iron Ion Fury because Iron Maiden got you know litigious mm. um that was built at the duke nukem 3d build engine and then i think it was uh spirit something or other was built in the quake one engine i'm sure somebody in the chat will yeah. let us know i know someone's somebody gonna say dusk. monster hunter rise oh that's coming to xbox dusk or no, monster no, no. hunter rise monster hunter rise is coming to xbox oh uh, but in january i think that is and a... it will be 4k i think wow that game does and not it will <laughs> run at 60 frames i think in 1080p uh but Think about that. We'll talk about that when we talk about how poorly Pokemon runs. Yes. <laughs> but think about that. Monster Hunter Rise, built for the Nintendo Switch. Yeah. Gonna run at 60 frames on an Xbox. And I also think it's 4K. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, Eric says, 2042 isn't that bad, especially if you have Game Pass. It's free now. Yes, free is always better. Free is always better. Uh, All right. So those are, oh wait, no, we're not done with free games. No, yet. no, in a surprise twist, uh, in a shocking development, Nintendo uh, Switch Online members uh, from today uh, until uh, December 12th, so for the next, next six Tuesday. the next six days, uh, you can download and try the full game of River City Girls at no additional cost. That is insane. That is cool. You can play the entire game for a week. And not only that, if you like it and you want to play it for, uh, beyond the trial, it will be 50% off. Whoa. Yes. Okay. So you get the whole game within this trial? The whole game. That's incredible. I yeah. I love that and I want that for more games. Yes. Nintendo never does this. No, I'm shocked that they're doing this. Yeah. Um. River City Girls, if you haven't played it, it's a, you know, it's a classic style beat 'em up which I do enjoy. It is um, based on River City Ransom, uh, and it's also connected to, uh, if you know your Japanese beat 'em ups the Kunio-kun series. Okay. So, uh, I would say if you're into that shit, definitely check it out. And even if you're not, give it a try, because I feel like this is one of the things, if more people do it, Nintendo will do this with more games. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Peachy Keen in the chat says, if you like TMNT Shredder's Revenge... You really enjoy River City Girls, yes. which is probably true. Yeah. I haven't played much of that, but I believe him. Yeah. Uh, Photo Guy says you might be thinking of Wrath Aeon of Ruin. That's what I'm thinking of. Yes. Sounds about right. Yes. 
Uh, okay, so that's it. That's our public service announcement for games yes. that you can get with your subscription services right now. Very disappointed in Microsoft. <laughs> yeah. Very excited about Nintendo. They yeah. can do that stuff. Yeah. And now we're going to be very disappointed in Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mecha Dragon, thanks for the 100 bits. Bob, are you aware of James Hoffman? Yes, I watch every single one of his videos. He's a coffee guy. <laughs> yes. I watch all of his stuff. Uh, who I'm guessing is everyone's favorite coffee guy on YouTube. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Rock and Val, thanks for gifting a sub. Uh, Catlinger, thanks for the 14 months. Liggity Lemon, thanks for the subscription. And Rock and Val, thanks for gifting another sub. And Latin Red, thanks for the four months. I appreciate you, you people. Anyway, uh, let's talk about Panda Global and Nintendo. Yes. So uh, where did we leave off or do we want to just read the article? I think we should just like briefly summarize like what had happened. Okay. Between uh, if you want to do that since you know more. About yes. That. So last week we learned we, we learned it on the podcast, actually. Yes. Um, maybe there's a little more context that I know of now that might slip out in the yeah. beginning. But uh, ooh. Uh, so last week. um smash world tour smash world tour is uh a big of a big smash brothers event it's a big esports event uh that runs all year long mm -hmm. leading up to the big grand finale of smash world tour uh all of the best players compete all year round in all different tournaments and yes. they earn points and the ones with the most points get to compete in the final smash world tour that was gonna happen i think next weekend yes um and panda global also had their own version of that yes which they announced i think after the smash world tour that is also a year-long event and if you could compete in events that are uh smash world tour uh, i'm sorry if you compete in events that are panda global events uh you will earn points for the panda cup the grand finale which is happening in two weeks mm -hmm. or is that also next no that's in two yeah, two weeks. So the week after the Smash World Tour was going to be the Panda Cup. Uh, Panda Global said any events that are going on that have Smash World Tour points cannot compete in, ca cannot be involved in the Panda Cup. You need to be right. exclusive in the Panda Cup or not. Smash World Tour was like, I mean, you could, we'll take anybody. We don't care. Yeah. Um, Smash World Tour was also supposed to be the biggest prize pool in Smash history. Mm -hmm. I think it was two hundred fifty thousand dollars, which, honestly, uh, in the world of esports, tiny nothing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's that. Last year, Nintendo decided to officially partner with Panda Global, mm -hmm. which was monumental, monumentous, mo monumental, mo monumental. Yes. It was, it was very mental. It was very big. It was a big deal that yes. Nintendo wanted to partner with a, a Smash Bros. esports company. Yes. Because they've notoriously not played nice with Smash Bros. esports. They're notoriously not happy with the way that Smash Bros. esports is run and stuff. Uh, so they partnered with Panda Global, which was insane. So the Panda Cup is officially run alongside with nintendo yes. nintendo is part yes it is officially them. recognized yes. by nintendo as well yeah. smash world tour tried to become officially recognized and nintendo kind of said like well, we'll see how things it, go. it seemed like nintendo was like starting to work with them mm -hmm. and then out of nowhere nintendo just said we're cutting off fall ties with you and don't do your tournament yeah like so out of nowhere nintendo seemed to kind of dance around it throughout the year mm -hmm. nintendo was like uh we'll see how things go we'll we'll, we'll help you in some ways and maybe not in others and we'll, we'll, we'll keep we'll keep in contact and whatever uh, all the way up until the day before thanksgiving yes nintendo uh wanted an emergency meeting with smash world tour uh they had that meeting and they said in a lot of legalese they said, basically, um, things aren't the way they used to be. We will not work with you in, in an official capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, and Smash World Tour said, does that mean we can't have, you know, our tournament? Our tournament's in like a month. It's next week. Yeah. Uh, by today. Uh, and, and Nintendo said, those days are over. <laughs> so Smash World Tour said, I guess we got to shut down the tournament. Yeah. And, and Smash World Tour said to Nintendo... You know, there's like a lot of people who are flying out. There's people who 
have worked all year for this. There's people whose jobs, who's gonna or are gonna lose their jobs because of this decision. Yeah. And they said we've considered everything. Nintendo yeah. said we've considered all things good and bad. Mm-hmm. I don't know what good could come. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, after that, Smash World Tour released a statement. It said we can't run anymore. We're being shoved down by Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's it. There's nothing we can do. Also, mm-hmm. Panda Global is a bunch of pieces of shit. They were the CEO was running around telling other tournaments that uh, they can't run and that they would get them shut down by Nintendo. Uh, being really sneaky in the background, also telling other tournaments that they can't, com- they, 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 that they have to be exclusive or else they, yeah. they they can't work. He was trying to strong arm broadcasters into broadcasting Panda Global events for free. Just an absolute all around piece of shit. Yeah. Um. So all of that happened. That's where we left off last yes. week. Yes. So now we can talk about what happened this in this past week because Nintendo has released a statement. Nintendo has released an official statement. Smash World Tour released another statement. And Panda Global released a statement. And the CEO of Panda Global released a statement. Yes. There was a lot that happened. There's a lot. Yes. Yes. Um, should I just read Nintendo's statement? Sure. In, in full or? It's long, isn't it's, it? Yeah, it's pretty long. But I think, I think we can get through it. Okay. Definitely. I might stop you. That's fine. A lot because a lot of... What I think the problem is, is that Nintendo is talking like in legalese. They're yes. talking uh, in a way that doesn't hurt their IP, in a way that still gives them like wiggle room. Yeah, they're, it's like some sort of protection. Yeah, yeah. They're purposely being ambiguous, but yes. it's that ambiguity that led to this massive, what they're calling a miscommunication Yeah, in, in a roundabout way. Mm-hmm. So I might stop you a few times, but you can go ahead and read this. All right. So... Nintendo would like to explain to all Super Smash Bros. fans and interested parties the background and rationale related to our decision to not grant a license to the Smash World Tour SWT uh, for their upcoming activities. Nintendo's decision was solely based on our assessment of the proposals submitted by the SWT and our evaluation of their unlicensed activities. This decision was not influenced by, by any external parties such as Panda Global. Any partner that we grant a license to has to meet a high standard we require when it comes to the health and safety of our fans. It's also important that a partner adheres to brand and IP guidelines and conducts itself according to professional and organizational best practices. We use the same approach to independently assess all partners. If we discover that a partner is doing something inappropriate, we will work to correct it. When we notify the SWT, that we would not license their 2022 or 2023 activities. We also let them know verbally that we are not requiring they cancel the 2022 finals event because of the impact it would have on players. Thus, the decision to cancel the Smash World Tour 2022 was and still is their own choice. We are open to partnering with other organizations and will continue to offer licenses for major tournaments outside of the Panda Cup. Panda Global will continue to be a key partner, and we look forward to receiving proposals from other groups uh, for tournament licenses. In the meantime, Panda continues to advocate on behalf of the Super Smash Bros. community, even to the point that Panda has advocated for other organizations and tournaments to work with Nintendo, such as the Big House and the organizers of the Smash World Tour to benefit the larger Smash Bros. community. Yeah, bullshit. Nintendo cares about Super Smash Bros. fans and its community very much, and we hope to continue to hear their passionate uh, feedback. We are committed to working hard to bring joy and fun to the community through tournaments, uh, while we while also ensuring our uh, we and our partners are operating in a manner that is positive and responsible. All right. While you were uh, uh, reading all that. Mm-hmm. I turned off the uh, Moobot command that's telling everybody about the giveaway because that was getting really annoying in the chat. But okay. you, if you do explain more giveaway, it'll still log your giveaway. So don't worry about it. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah, again, they're talking in a lot of legalese. Uh, the, the strangest thing to come with this was them saying that uh, Smash World Tour shut down on their own accord. Yes. But also, Nintendo's decision was solely based on our assessment of the proposals submitted by Smash World Tour and our evaluation of their unlicensed activities. What decision? Yeah, like... <laughs> if they're saying that they shut down on their own accord, what 
decision. Yeah, like why why would they shut down then? Like if they could still have the tournament, why do they shut down? Because they couldn't play Smash specifically? I don't think that stopped other tournaments before well, though. Th that's that's the thing is that the only thing that Nintendo can really do is shut down the broadcast. Right. It's not like they can bust into the event place and go, "Hey, everybody stop playing Smash." Yeah. You know? Like what what Yeah, no, I know. What copyright issues would happen maybe if they're promoting the event with Nintendo characters? Yeah, I mean it's called the Smash World Tour, so I mean there's only one game you'd really be playing. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Smash Up on the Wii, obviously. <laughs> so, I mean, the logo doesn't have anything to do with Smash. Other right. And the fact that it is called Smash. Yeah. Um, but that's only one of the four words in the title <laughs> of, the, of the game. Um, so, their decision that they're going by is that they don't want to work with Smash World Tour in an official capacity. Yes. But why then... If they, if if they're if they wanted to say that and not shut down Smash World Tour, why would they do it the day before Thanksgiving? Why wouldn't they wait until after the event? Because yeah. they're saying that they don't want to work with Smash World Tour in 2022 or 2023. They haven't even submitted a proposal to work with Nintendo in 2023 yet. Right. That wasn't even on the, in the cards. Right. So why would Nintendo say this? If they wanted Smash World Tour to, to, to continue. I mean, maybe, you know, Nintendo knows they drag their feet trying to, you know, get this approved. And, you know, when they ultimately said no, and then Smash World Tour took it uh, took it public. And Nintendo's like, all right, well, now we're not going to work for with you next year either. I, w what happened was Nintendo straight up does not want Smash World Tour to happen. Right. <laughs> and now they're getting a lot of flack, and now they're using their legalese to their advantage. And yeah. They're, they're, they're saying, we we never said that. We were just trying to protect ourselves and our IP, you know? They're walking it back. Um, the, the, the biggest point here is that they said the decision was all Smash World Tour's to shut down we didn't yes. tell them to shut down they shut down on their own uh which is kind of not true they shut down because they feared that they were going to get shut down yeah that they were going to face some sort of legal action uh well anyway uh are we gonna do we have a response from smash world tour uh i don't know if they if they responded they responded after that and it was yeah. a long i know Panda Global responded um, in addition to Nintendo's response. They put out a response to Smash World Tour getting okay. shut down. That's at the bottom of the, that IGN article. What is? The Panda Global's response. That's sweet. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. Uh, the team that manages and administers the Panda Cup has worked diligently to create an exciting, welcoming environment for competitive Smash throughout 2022. Behind this effort to... Uh, behind this effort to, uh, are over 40 members of the Smash community, including video editors, web developers, talent managers, uh, sponsorship salespeople, and more, who provide resources, expertise, and logistical help to 10 major events this year. As a result, the Panda Cup began and continues to be a project of passion that seeks to magnify and enhance community efforts made throughout competitive Smash. We were all as surprised as the public to see the announcement of the Smash World Tour Championships cancellation as well as the accompanying statement which attacked the hard work and ethics of those behind the Panda Cup. The team has not informed any uh, intent the team was not informed of any intention to cancel the Smash World Cup Championship 2022, nor has the team ever engaged in any conversations that sought those ends. As Nintendo of America indicated in their own statement, the organizers of the Smash World Tour were not required to cancel their 2022 championship event, and any implication that Panda Cup uh, team had any influence in that regard is false. We are excited to see a fruitful year of competition uh, come to an end with both December Circuit events and the Smash World Tour's decision to cancel theirs is disappointing. Panda has listened to the community and changed some of our approaches to working with tournaments based on the feedback. In Smash World Tour's statement, there are a number of accusations leveled against Dr. Allen, the CEO of Panda. In reality, Dr. Allen, as Nintendo of America has cooperated, has been one of the more vocal supporters of, uh, sorry, one of the more vocal supporters of the broader community and the Smash World Tour organizers in internal conversations. However, the Panda Cup team 
does acknowledge and regret an interaction between Dr. Allen and Beyond the Summit in which he spoke in a manner which did not reflect either uh, guidance from Nintendo or our own sta uh, standards. Panda took efforts to rectify the situation immediately and uh, member, sorry, uh, situation immediately. And in the second half of the year, a dedicated team made up of multiple staff members was assembled to manage Panda Cup activities and serve as the primary point of contact for event runners, removing the possibility of future miscommunications from occurring. Miscommunications. Yes. So, hold on. They're saying that uh, be, they know that Dr. Allen, the CEO of Panda Global, yes. was being a piece of shit mm -hmm. to other people in the Smash community, other broadcasters, and other event organizers. Yes. So they said... Instead of reprimanding him or firing him or put it or making him step down or whatever, we're just gonna uh, uh, have a point of contact between our CEO and other people outside of our company uh, to stop any miscommunications. Yes, they're chalking those up to mis miscommunications. The nefarious yes. actions, him trying to strong yes. arm yes. other people, yes. is all miscommunications. Mm -hmm. You, you you may continue. Uh, it was just basically Panda, the Panda Cup team has invested thousands of hours towards making sure this year's cup has been as strong at, strong of an offering as we can provide, and we are looking forward to continuing to build alongside the communities we serve, a uh, promising future for Smash. Obviously, this caused a lot of people in Panda Global to leave and resign and yes. quit, and and even uh, people who are. Uh, uh, players under Panda Global have yeah. resigned and quit and stuff. There's some people who are locked into contracts. Uh, they're finding their way out, their way out of it and whatever. Smash World Tour also responded to Nintendo's statement before that statement went out. Uh huh. Uh, uh, they said we are struggling to understand why Nintendo contacted us at all last week. If they truly wanted us to continue operating, we are struggling to understand a why. They would not simply reach out to us after our events rather than rush to meet up with us before the Thanksgiving holiday break, just two weeks before our championship event. Regardless, we stand by our first follow-up uh, and would like to reiterate that we received our notice in writing from Nintendo. We also received a direct response to our questions in our call about if we can continue to run the upcoming championships and the 2023 tour with the unofficial mutual understanding that we would not be shut down. We were told directly that, quote, those times were over. So I don't know how else they could take that other than yeah. they're going to get shut down. Right. Um, but again, what could they do to them besides shut down the broadcast? Anyway, uh, that happened. Panda Global released their statement saying mm -hmm. that uh, they're going to have they're sticking to their guns. They're saying their CEO, uh, they're kind of dancing around the fact that the CEO is a piece of shit yeah. and saying that they're just not going to have him be a point of yeah. contact anymore. And uh, the Smash community was outraged, obviously. Yes. And uh, a lot of people are boycotting Panda Global and boycotting that event. Right. The superhero here, Ludwig, he is a big time streamer now. Was a yes. Twitch streamer. Mm -hmm. Now he's a YouTube streamer. He was a melee, a professional melee player. Yes. He decided, in light of Panda and Nintendo's lackluster response, I'm happy to announce the Scuffed World Tour. One day melee and ultimate event, Sunday, December 18th. I keep freaking not showing what's on my screen. <laughs> uh, Sunday, December 18th. That might sound familiar. That's the exact day the Panda Cup was happening. Right. So he decided to directly compete against the Panda Cup, mm -hmm. featuring the eight highest placed Smash World Tour competitors. So if you were g earning points in the Smash World Tour and you were excited you were going to be in the finale, yeah. you now have a chance here. You can still be in the finale. You can still be in the finale. It's just a different finale. Yes. All with the goal to raise money for uh, Video Game Boot Camp, which is the broadcaster of Smash World Tour. So they're the yeah. ones who are going to lose the most money out of this deal. Right. Uh. And then he shows the uh, the people who are competing. Uh, and then he's also providing $50,000 to the prize pool uh, of his own money. So yeah. kind of a huge deal. So he kind of saved the day there. And it's also a great smack in the face to Panda Global. Yeah. A few days after that, Panda released yet another statement. Yes. This one 
goes like this. Panda has heard the concerns of the Smash community and has taken immediate action. Alan, the CEO, yes. is no longer CEO effective immediately. There you go. In the interim, Panda employees are working with outside advisors to form a temporary interim management committee to act as CEO to navigate this critical time. The identities of those in the IMC will not be made public at this time due to concerns over harassment and safety. I don't think... I mean, that's fair. Why would they be harassed? It's the CEO that's the problem. Well, you could have people come like coming at them, like threatening them to do better. True. Because, you know, people are crazy and yes. they think even though a new person comes in, you know, they're going to be just as bad and they're going to like threaten them to do better. Or maybe there are Dr. Allen stands out there who <laughs> think that this is like some usurping, you know, replacing him yeah. with like, you know, I don't know, whatever the top button topic is, a you know, woke mob or whatever <laughs> our dad complains about these days. Uh, the IMC's immediate priorities are work with any team member that desires to resign, including release from any contractual obligations. That's pretty cool. Mm hmm. Uh, support those who feel displaced through these events to find a home either with Panda or another organization. We call on the com community to treat those affected by these events with grace, understanding, and to call out and report any attempts of doxing or harassment. I mean, yeah, that's important. Yeah. Additionally, due to security concerns to of... Now, this is the biggest load of bullshit I ever heard. <laughs> Additionally, due to security concerns for our staff and contractors, the Panda Cup finale is postponed. The IMC will work to issue refunds to all those who registered in the coming weeks. That's bullshit because they are postponing it because of Ludwig's event. You think so? Absolutely 1,000%. <laughs> also because of the backlash. Like yeah, nobody's going to want to yeah. see their stupid event. Everybody's going to boycott it. Yeah. Everyone's going to boycott their event. Everybody's going to go watch Ludwig's event. Right. Today. And they're hoping that the heat will lay off until, you know, later on when, right. they, when, they, when everything blows over, then they'll do their stupid event. Right, right. Panda is committed to demonstrating our dedication to the community, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then, finally, after all of this, after all of that, Dr. Allen, the CEO, responds, I've stepped down as CEO of Panda to protect the safety and well-being of the team and himself. My statement with evidence is coming. Oh, boy. And then he has a picture with dot, with dot points that says, Smash World Tour lied? And... BTS leadership put the community in jeopardy. Oh no, not BTS! Yeah, <laughs> they're they're joining the army right now. But don't leave them alone. I don't know what BTS stands for, other than behind the scenes and uh, beyond the scene. That's what. Oh, beyond the summit. That's a uh, uh, beyond the scene. Is is that? That's the band. That's the J-pop. Yeah, K-pop. K-pop band. Yeah. Beyond the summit is a broadcaster. Okay. Uh. Leadership put the community in jeopardy. I need to know what the deal is with that. Well, his statement with evidence is coming. Beyond the Summit is the one that came forward and said that Dr. Allen mm -hmm. uh, tried to strong arm them into broadcasting his events for free. Right. So he's claiming that they lied. Also, what Ludwig pointed out in his video that he made about this is that all of this could have fit in the tweet. He didn't need to take a picture yeah. and put it on this. He could have just put it all in. <laughs> it's true. There's no reason for this at all. Uh, I'm very curious to see what he's going to say. Uh, I don't think there's any world where he comes out on top. Mm -hmm. But uh, you never know. Yeah. I mean, everybody's innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. Uh, I'd be ve I, I don't know how in what world Smash World Tour could have lied why yeah. would they shut yeah down uh, they, they i feel like they have the most to lose right you know right yeah so why would they shoot themselves in the foot is there mm -hmm. anybody that has anything to gain from shutting it down it doesn't make any sense to me yeah um anyway is that the end i think that's where we left that's off. it yeah no that's um that concludes this week in what's going on with the smash community <laughs> That was the last thing that guy tweeted. Yeah. So uh, we honestly still have no idea. We're still waiting for his statement. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I don't know what what could come of that. I feel really bad for Smash World Tour. Uh, hopefully, uh, Ludwig's tournament, uh, you know, does everybody good. Hopefully, it, it, people who are gonna broadcast Smash World Tour, hopefully, they still you know yeah. get what they need. Hopefully, Nintendo doesn't shut down Ludwig's tournament. Yeah. And uh, 
I mean, all they can really do is shut down the broadcast, and and that that would uh, mm-hmm. that would make it so that they don't make a lot of money. But you know, yeah, at least it would still happen. Uh, so yeah, that's the end of that. There were people in the chat who said they never heard of Panda Global until today. I don't blame you. There's a lot of names here that uh, yeah. you would never hear unless you're like in with the Smash community. Uh, Panda Global. You may know them because they developed, we talked about this last week, they developed a um, Nintendo Switch dock that works in portable mode that makes it so that you can play, uh, it's a GameCube controller adapter that's also a dock. Yes. You may have seen that before. Also, they were developing a controller that we've talked about on the show before that was a GameCube controller that was like super fancy and it was like very expensive and it took a bunch of crowdfunding money and then said, we... Are running into issues there's a lot more we want to do to make this better we're going to give everybody their money back which was very cool of them to do so it's yeah. very strange that they were willing to give back millions of dollars and then also try to be such a monopoly in the smash brothers community. yes so very strange oh uh, latin red says i think i got auto timed out because my weird a character no you got timed out by me because you kept spamming <laughs> And also, I see you've been banned in Scootish's chat, so I'm watching you like a hawk, buddy. Anyway, uh, I guess... Oh, we got notification we should probably... Oh, get. yeah. Uh, like, for example, uh, Migs Lunar Strike for 25 months. Thank you very much. And Cecil, thanks for the 26 months. Uh, all right. I guess we should move on. Yes. That's, uh, that's just, I mean, you know, we gave our commentary. That's as much as we can say about that. Yeah, it's very complicated. I mean, There's a lot going on. But I suspect that Panda Global CEO probably did a lot of stupid shit. I feel like this is not going to be the end of this story. Absolutely not. Um, we'll just have to. I mean, this is where, where we're at. So we're going to have to just wait and see where this goes. Video Gomez says, Smash died the moment they put Sora in anyway. You know, he's not wrong. No. There will never be another Smash game <laughs> anymore. That was it. Hey, why don't we talk about another dead game, uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. <laughs> and another Nintendo statement of apology. Oh, this one's an interesting one. Yes. Uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet has been available on Nintendo Switch for a few weeks, and now uh, and since release, there have been a lot of concerns raised about the game's technical issues. Although the ninth generation is a step in the right direction for the series and its open-world gameplay, the performance issues and bugs have made it quite difficult for some trainers to enjoy. Now, in an update, Nintendo has announced a new patch for Scarlet and Violet uh, that will be released on December 1st, uh, so it's out. Uh, in addition to the full patch notes via the official support page, it's there's also an apology for the game's issues and mention of how it's taking players' feedback on board and aims to provide trainers around the globe with a positive experience. Uh, we are aware that players may encounter issues that affect the game's performance. Our goal is always to give players a positive experience with our games, and we apologize for the inconvenience. We take feedback from players seriously and are working on improvements uh, to the games. So so this is very annoying to me because mm-hmm. uh, when this came out later last week, yeah. Uh, oh, December 1st? Yeah. When this came out, I was streaming, and everybody kept coming into the chat asking if this fixed the game and a lot of people were saying wow this area ran a lot worse before the patch yeah this patch does fuck all so i was officially the patch yes the patch notes reads season one of ranked battles will kick off allowing you to enjoy ranked battles through the battle uh, stadium please check the in-game notice for more details about ranked battle season one an issue has been fixed that causes the music to not play correctly during the battles with the Elite Four and the top champion in the Victory Row path, and other select bug fixes have been made. So, they didn't name any bug fixes. Right. The uh, music not playing correctly during the uh, battles with the Elite Four and the top champion in the Victory Road path, that is the Ed Sheeran song. Oh. And they did that, I think, because people were patching out the edge of the right song. <laughs> they were modding the game to not play that song yeah uh so i think they fixed that um anyway the select bug fixes they didn't really name any but that... what's very strange is we are aware that players may encounter issues that, oh you read that already yeah that affect the game's performance that's a really big thing for nintendo to come out and admit yeah what's even 
wilder is that there's a lot of people who were on the fucking Nintendo podcast. Was over there <laughs> fighting everybody because they were all saying this wasn't a Nintendo game. It's a Game Freak Pokemon Company game. Okay. So Nintendo can't really do anything. And I was like, yes, they can. They could fucking tell them to make a good game. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And the game is the best selling Pokemon game ever. So why would they want to say make a better game? Yeah. Because maybe the Pokemon Company doesn't care that the game sucks. Yeah. Because they're making a lot of money. Nintendo definitely cares. Yeah. Because they have a quality that they need to live up to. Yeah. And they don't care about how much money something makes. They want that quality to be good and be consistent. They have canceled shit over and over again because they don't think it's going to be good. Where's Metroid Prime 4? Yeah. It's not out because Nintendo was not uh, sure the quality was up to snuff. Think about how often they delay Zelda. I don't like when people say that Pokemon is not a Nintendo game. Because it's not technically owned by Nintendo. Maybe that's technically correct, which is the best kind of correct. However, however, Pokemon is essentially, in every sense of the word, a first party Nintendo franchise. Yeah. It has only ever appeared on Nintendo systems. Yeah. Nintendo puts a substantial amount of money into the financing of the development of the games. Yeah. So they do have financial stake in it. So for for people to say it's not really a Nintendo game, Nintendo does have, you know, however little control they have over Pokemon, they have control over it. Yeah. They if they, they didn't, Pikachu wouldn't have been in Smash on 64. Sure. <laughs> so it, it Pokemon is synonymous with Nintendo. Yes. And Nintendo very much values their IP and and, yes. and their image and, and how people what people think of their stuff you know yeah. everything's got to be polished nice nobody's gonna fucking buy a switch if mario sucks you know yes so yeah this game's for kids and yes yeah, the best-selling game of all time yeah. or uh, i'm sorry the best-selling uh pokemon of all time i think it's the best-selling game in japan ever <laughs> uh but uh people are gonna stop buying it yeah keep sucking yeah and you know just again i'm gonna reiterate just because it's for kids doesn't mean it's okay if it sucks. Yeah. Kids deserve good things too. <laughs> and we're gonna stop buying it for our kids if yeah. they keep sucking. Yeah, seriously. Um during that conference during that argument I was having on the yeah. Nintendo podcast, uh they were going on saying it's a first party game. And I was like, You can't say it's a first party game if you're gonna say that Nintendo has nothing to do yeah. with it. You gotta say it's a second party game. Yeah. Too. And even then, if it's a second party game, that still means Nintendo has financial stake in it. Yes. Because Rare was a second party studio during the N64, and Nintendo financed all of their games. Yep. So. Yeah, no, this is a huge deal for Nintendo. Yes. And for Nintendo to come out and apologize. Yes. For, we apologize. They actually apologize. Yes. They are taking a hit for yeah. Game Freak and the Pokemon Company. Yeah. And you better believe there's some conversations happening behind closed doors being yeah. like, guys, what the fuck happened? Yeah. If this really was, if Pokemon wasn't really like a Nintendo game, I mean, theoretically, the Pokemon Company could say, we're going to put all our games on PlayStation now, yeah. but they're not because they know of the relationship they have with Nintendo and the relationship that people's minds have between Pokemon and Nintendo. I brought up that argument too. Yeah, I, I said they'll do. They could just put it on PlayStation then. Yeah. If it's if it's not there, you know, would they? No, no, they would never no. ever do that. That would be yeah. insane for them to do that. <laughs> uh, K Jack in the chat is bringing up Bob. They did patch the duplication glitch. Okay, so there was a okay. thing. Oh wait, people were duplicating shinies and items. Okay, I knew about the item glitch where like uh, you could just like give your Pokemon an item and then you put it in the box and mash a button and it duplicates the item or some shit. Yeah. Um, they patch that out. So they're patching out exploits instead of patching out the performance issues. But yeah. the game is so undeniably broken that it's not going to be as easy as making a 1.1 patch to fix yeah. the performance issues. There's going to be a lot. They need to fucking work from the ground up. Here. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm happy they acknowledged it at least. Otherwise, gotta be honest with you, the game's not too bad. Kind of <laughs> like the game. I'm sure, like, 
I'm sure it is like, you know, a good game buried underneath an unfinished mess. Yeah. You know, one of those situations. Um, Video Gomez in the chat did, does bring up a good point, though. How how the fuck did they apologize for Mitchell Pride 4 with nothing to show but approved Pokemon? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, that's the big thing. That's what, like, is surprising me. So, so I, I... I heard through the grapevine okay. that uh, this is pretty obvious. We 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 kind of learned about this with uh, um, Cyberpunk. Yeah. Uh, Cyberpunk got approved, and then yeah. it was a broken mess, and then it got revoked from the PlayStation Store. Yes. Um, that should have never passed certification. Right. This game should have also never passed eShop certification. Mm-hmm. It's clearly broken. It doesn't perform right. Uh, what happens is when a game doesn't pass... When a very high profile game doesn't pass Nintendo certification, mm-hmm. Nintendo goes, Hey, you promise to fix it with a day one patch? And then they go, Yeah, we'll promise to fix it with a day one patch. And then they release a day one patch, and then it doesn't do shit. Yeah. Uh, this did have a day one patch. I think the day one patch released like up to a week, if not more, before the <laughs> game even came out. Yeah. And it didn't really do much. But reviewers and influencers who got the game early through wacky means yeah acted like the game wasn't broken (laughs) because i think that they either had a lot to lose because they're pokemon influencers they got it they're banking on the game being popular but also they don't want to be the one to be like hey guys i think this is gonna be pretty bad also the game could be good by the time the game comes out they're playing an early build maybe it'll be fixed yeah and I read, I reread some cyberpunk. Well, one the IGM cyberpunk review. Yeah, they spent no time talking about the performance issues. Yeah, they were just talking about how great the game was. Well, I think a lot of the cyberpunk uh, reviews were done on PC. Yeah, which at the time was the only system that could get it running at all, let okay. alone properly. And then the PS4 and Xbox One reviews, right. CD Projekt Red put a embargo on it. I think like a week after the game came out. Right. And when those reviews started coming out and they were like getting like threes out of 10, that's when like things started really going bad. They also uh, only allowed them to use uh, footage that they provided. Yeah. Um, But I suspect the issue with that was that if it's a PC review, I suspect the reviewers were afraid that their computers were the problem. Right. And they just didn't want to say anything. Mm-hmm. Cause I mean, you know, you don't have anything to go on. You're the guy, you know? Yeah. It'd be weird for me to be like, I don't know. I mean, I would probably say that I would probably be like, maybe my computer's an issue, but this thing's running pretty bad. My computer yeah. shouldn't be an issue. It could run all these other games, but something seems to be up. Hopefully there's a day one patch. Yeah. You know, that seems like a really important thing. Maybe even try the game out on a few computers. Yeah. But uh, that's what I think happened with Pokemon also. I think people like were afraid to talk about the performance issues because maybe there would be an update yeah. that would uh, make it make their review obsolete. Maybe it was just them that was having the issues. Maybe they didn't realize the issues yeah. were as bad as they were. Um, I don't know. And maybe, yeah, I, I, I don't know. But I hear that uh, Nintendo will make a deal and say you release a day one patch, you fix the issues, and we'll we'll call it a day. And okay. then that just didn't happen. And if that was anybody else, like an indie game or something, they would have just not gotten yeah. approved at all. How does a Nintendo Switch game crash? You know, that should. How happen. does any game, any console game crash? Yeah. And and, and I made a whole video about this already, but the yeah. whole argument um, about uh the the game people saying that the game runs good on PC. Game's not made for PC. Right. Game's made That's for the, the fucking Exactly. <laughs> so anyway, otherwise, game's actually not that bad. <laughs> I actually kind of like the game. It's kind of fun, even though it's a little yeah. broken and a little messy and it's slog it slogs. People were coming to my chat being like, wow, the f- patch really fixes stuff. Does the patch fix stuff? The patch doesn't fucking fix anything. <laughs> it's a placebo effect. Yeah. Uh it's going to take a lot more than a couple patches to fix this thing because it's yeah. broken from the very bones of the game. Anyway. I'm done talking about Pokemon. Okay. Remind me when we're done with the podcast, I have to tell you about something that might be a pretty interesting opportunity. Okay. Related to Pokemon. Maybe. All right. Let me, let me just open up a note All right. and I'll... 
I don't want to. I don't want to say it publicly okay. yet. But we have okay. a little interesting opportunity here. Uh, my note popped up and it said, "Bill Murray's advice on relaxing your way to high performance." I will look that up after the podcast <laughs> right, as well. Okay. Anyway, do we have any more notifications? We have Cecil with twenty six months. I think we read that already. Uh, Eric says, "Definitely not buying the next Pokemon Day One. We'll wait to see what is wrong with it first. Did you not enjoy it with all of the issues? Because I kind of didn't care. Bob, did you talk about Smash World Tour updates? Yes, we did it. The uh, yes, we did it like about half an hour ago. Um, well, when we get to the next article, I think it's becoming more and more clear that." Buying games on day one is becoming less and less ideal. Like buying a game on day one is slowly but surely actually it's been like it's like been like this for a long time. Buying a game on day one is really no longer the ideal time to buy and play a game. You Why know? don't we talk about it right now? Let's do it. Uh Microsoft is raising their first-party Xbox games to $70 starting next year. Microsoft is increasing the prices of its upcoming first-party Xbox games next month from 2023 onward. Full-price games from Xbox Game Studios like Redfall, Starfield, and Forza Motorsport will be priced at $69.99, nice, instead of the usual $59.99. It's a price increase that matches the pricing that competitors like Sony, Ubisoft, and Take-Two all offer their uh, their own video games at Microsoft issued the following statement about the price increases. We've held on price increases until after the holidays. So families can enjoy the gift of gaming starting in 2023, our new built for next gen full price games, including Forza Moses, Forza Motorsport, Forza Motorsport. <laughs> Redfall and Starfield will launch at 69.99 USD nice. on all, pla on all platforms. This price reflects the content, scale, and technical complexity of these titles. As with all games developed by our teams at Xbox, they will also be available with Game Pass the same day they launch. Uh, Microsoft's price bump uh, to its own upcoming Xbox Game Studios titles isn't entirely unsurprising. Um, the era of the $70 game quickly emerged as the current gen consoles launched two years ago, with Sony offering its own PS5 games uh, priced between $49.99 and $69.99. Microsoft has been focused on offering its own games at launch on Game Pass, and it also maintained the price of its subscription offerings too. Uh, CEO Phil Spencer previously hinted that price increases could come after the holidays. We've held on our price We've held price on our console. We've held price on games on our subscription. I don't think we'll be able to do that forever, he admitted in an interview in October. I do think at some point we'll have to raise some prices on certain things. But going into this holiday, we thought it was really important that we maintain the prices that we have. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, we knew it was going to happen. Yes. Nintendo kind of seemed to use it as like a marketing ploy at first to be like hey you know everybody, everybody's raising the prices but we're gonna hold firm a little bit yeah um i remember that quote from phil spencer but that was taken more so as they're gonna raise the price of the consoles yes because this was after sony raised the price of the ps5 in other territories that raising the price of a console is crazy yeah because yeah. they're already very expensive. Yes, and it's tradition. You take a loss on the console yes. and you make up for it in game. That's what I thought they were going to do anyway. Like, uh, it was what I thought Sony was probably should have done was keep the console where it is, yeah. but like, you know, charge more for games, charge more for PSVR, which they are. Yeah. Um, and same thing with Microsoft. Microsoft seemed to be just fine taking the loss on consoles because they have such big deal yeah, because, with the subscription and you know because microsoft has that you know microsoft word document money yes that is true <laughs> <laughs> you know the word company yeah. i said that i think in a did i say that in a video or something i said microsoft <laughs> something <laughs> like microsoft the company that makes word <laughs> oh yeah because i said logitech the company that makes mice yeah the mouse company made a device and they partnered with Microsoft of Word fame <laughs> yeah. or something like that. And people got mad that I said Logitech only makes mice. I was like, did you not hear the second part? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I um, mean, to be fair, they make very good mice. <laughs> they make very good words. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, I was 
I thought for sure uh, we were talking about the consoles being raised. The price. It's unprecedented times that technology is costing an insane amount of money. Yeah. It, I mean, it's unprecedented times that everything's costing an insane yeah. amount of money. Um, you know, on you know, on a similar note, of uh, Hasbro raised the prices of all their like adult collector figures. You know, like Star Wars: The Black Series and Marvel Legends it used to be twenty dollars. Within the span of two years, it went up to twenty two, and now they're twenty five dollars each. Damn. Some of them are thirty dollars because a Boba Fett has to come with a different jetpack. It's really hard being a grown man. <laughs> it is. It's very hard being a grown man with two kids who's still in Arrested Development. But you see what I'm saying? Like, out of nowhere, yeah. prices are going up across the board for yeah. everything, you know, sometimes dramatically. But but there's a reason for prices going up. I'm making a video on the best emulators to come out this year, like the portable yeah. emulators. Every single one of them is out of stock. <laughs> And, and I think all of them raised the prices after release. Probably. The Analog Pocket is $220. Yes. Uh, the Steam Deck, I think, held firm at the I price. think the Steam Deck still hold firm. Yeah. yeah. The Steam Deck is available. Yes. Which is incredible. Yes. Amazing. And we'll have more to say about the Steam Deck True. later on. Um, uh, but, 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 yeah, it's... it's we, we, we knew they were going to raise the price it's, of, of the game. It's not... It, I, I honestly... Don't mind them raising the price. I'm coming from a place of privilege here, but I feel right. like games probably uh, they they're a huge undertaking. It takes a lot to make them. Uh, there's usually a lot in them. Not every game is worth the same as as their 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 brothers and sisters. Yeah, but a lot of them should probably be worth more than sixty dollars. Right. Imagine paying the same price for Zelda: Breath of the Wild and Tetris. <laughs> True. Um, I mean, it is interesting to note that, um, this article mentioned it's Microsoft, Sony, Ubisoft, and take two who are doing, who are really doing the $70 games. Those are all Western studios. Well, not Sony, but like most of their like big budget games are from their Western studios anyway. Um, like that's not Capcom. That's not, uh, Konami. That's not, uh, Square. At least not yet. I'm mm -hmm. sure Square will raise the prices of all their games because they like to rip people off. Um, but also too, this goes back to what I was trying to say before game prices, like when a game, okay. The game launches at $70 game prices go down fairly quickly, fairly. Yeah. They go down fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, it launches at $70, but if you can wait six months, it could be on sale for half of that, maybe yeah. even more. And by that point, bugs will be fixed. There'll be patches so that the game is in a better state than it was at launch. And if you wait just a little bit longer, you know, if the game has DLC, you can get like the game of the year edition, which is everything at a more, at a reasonable price or, you know, every, everything goes on sale during like a Black Friday deal and you can just get it all at once. So that's what I mean by it doesn't really pay to buy a game at launch anymore. Right. You are better off just waiting for like six months to a year to play the game so that all the bugs get worked out, um, all the DLC comes out, and you can experience it, you know, you can get it at a price you can afford, you or, know? Or, in some cases, just two weeks. Sonic Frontiers <laughs> came out, what, November 8th? Yes. And then it was on sale. Two and a half weeks later. Yes. For forty dollars? Yeah. Sixty? Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. Well, that's you know, that um that's what I mean. Yeah. Like we had to get it day one because we had to talk about it. But even then, I think I feel like even like influencers will more and more realize that, you know, it might pay to wait to talk about it. I don't know games. about that, because we're willing to take the loss on it. True. You know? yeah. It's our job. I it, guess it's the money. I guess, you know? but and being on top of it, it's kind of worth losing twenty dollars yeah you know? but anyway uh we're always championing that games are cheaper than they've ever been yes uh i saw this tweet that's of course always relevant and we always want to bring this up whenever we talk about the price of video i don't like talking about the price of video games because i don't want these companies to know that they can raise the price yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh this is from alan johnson who tweeted uh video games can't be 70 dollars exclamation point mm -hmm. and he said kid you didn't live through the 90s 
And here is a circular from Toys R Us. Remember yes. Toys R Us? Oh, R.I.P. Toys R Us. This still hurts. Uh, here's a bunch of Sega games. $80, $75, $90. Is that, what is that? Garfield. Caught in the act. $90 for your $90. Garfield game on Sega Genesis. Uh, but Game Gear, was it was only $60. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, and then there are Super Nintendo games. $70. Mm-hmm. Mostly $70, actually. Uh, $70. Six, I see a lot of $60 and two seventy dollars games. $370 games. $370 games. Uh, the whole system was $129.99. And it came with Donkey Kong. That's cool. That, yeah. That's probably good. Take that, PlayStation 5. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, wait, wait. That's wait. because the N64 was out. A single controller for the Super Nintendo, $15. I miss those days. <laughs> um, where the pro- Oh, Super Mario 64. They called it N64 Super Mario. Yeah. $75. Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, $80. Yeah. All uh, of these games are seventy-five to eighty dollars. That is insane. That is a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, and here they are again. I guess these are at different times. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there you go. Games and think about that. That's in nineties money. That's yeah. more money than yeah. than now money. Yeah. So count your blessings. Get Game Pass. I don't know. What to tell you. <laughs> or uh, just wait. Or just, just wait. wait. Or just wait for a sale. Good point. All right. Uh, next news. I guess you know the cheapest place to buy games is Steam. Yes. Uh, and guess what? They have so many Steam decks now. They're just giving them away. Kind of insane. Yes. Uh, in celebration of the Game Awards, Steam Deck is now uh, now being in stock and gaming in general. We will be giving away one. 512 gigabyte Steam Deck every minute during the live airing of the Game Awards. Enter below for your chance to win. All right, I'm a little mad about this because <laughs> they have a lot of Steam Decks, okay? Yeah. They, they've been at, they haven't had them for a while. It still takes one to two weeks to ship the Steam Decks. Right. They don't have that many. <laughs> they could ship those quicker if they didn't do this, Maybe. Maybe. Uh, to enter, you must be a U.S., Canada, U.K., or EU resident. Winners will be drawn from registrants watching the Game Awards on Steam. All registrants will receive an exclusive animated Steam PAL digital sticker. Ooh. Uh, f- yeah. And now a message from Jeff Keighley. Is that... So one... It's, so let's, it's like three hours, right? The yeah. And they use... They frequently go over, so that's going to yeah. fuck them. So that's like almost 200 Steam decks. You know what? That's not that many, I guess. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. It's not that. Um, so, yeah. All you have to do is you got to go to Steam, uh, register, and this is important. You have to watch the Game Awards on Steam. Oh. Yeah. That's going to not be a fun experience. I no, bet. probably not. Uh, I entered this, mm-hmm. and I, I know I'm not going to be able to watch the whole Game Awards. Just leave it on. So... Uh, I do think there is a catch. I love this little cute little Steam Deck guy. Yeah. Is it a PNG? Can I? Oh my god! Is it a GIF? <gasps> is it just a GIF? I can't tell. It's a PNG. No, hey, that doesn't make any sense. It's moving. Ah, whatever. Okay, this is like the fine print. In order to be eligible to win a prize using this method of entry, your Steam account must be in good standing. You must have made a purchase on Steam between November 14th, 2021 and November 14th, 2022. Uh, And your entry in the giveaway must have been made in good faith. So that's a thing. Like you couldn't even buy a Steam Deck unless you had an active account. Yeah. I don't think I bought a game within that time frame though. So I don't, I think I'm immediately disqualified. They had really, they had a really hard time with scalpers. So that's yeah. why they did that. I kind of understand. It kind of sucks, but yeah. I kind of understand. Uh, I'll say I bought two Steam games last night. Oh. I bought Guilty Gear Strive because it was on my <laughs> wish list and I was waiting for it to go on sale because it was always $60. Okay. And it was $40, so I bought it. Also, I bought Rainbow Six Three, which I wow. I had already, but I don't think I did. It was two dollars and fifty cents, wow. and it came with a Thena sword. That's cool. Raven Shield is another expansion, isn't it? No, or is Ra- it called Rainbow Six Three Raven Shield. 
It was called Rainbow Six Three Raven Shield. Because I didn't see Raven Shield on the box. Okay. Yeah. No. Raven Shield is the third game. Like full oh, it stop. Is? Okay. Yeah. It is called that. Yeah. So uh, okay, I bought that and I tried to play it for two seconds. My God. Oh, I'd imagine it's uh, it's, it's aged quite a bit. <laughs> so like, it's not optimized for the Steam Deck, obviously. Right. But uh, the, you know. Have you how much of the Steam Deck have you played? Just you played? that one, just that one time you brought it over. Did you try the touchpad? Did you feel the force feedback from the? Touchpad? I, I like fiddled with it a little bit. It like but... vibrates a little bit, right? Yeah, it, like tells you like that you're moving. Yeah, the thumbstick was doing that. Really, it was very strange. Huh. Um, but anyway, uh, every I've been playing the Steam Deck a lot, but every time I pick up the Steam Deck, it's mostly I pick it up realize i don't have something downloaded or i need to update something and then i do that and then i put the steam deck down and then that's my experience <laughs> i don't end up actually playing a game uh, you can't say it's like auto update or it is okay but like it doesn't do it when it's sleeping in the same way that other consoles do okay so that stinks i am always just constantly up like i had sonic yeah it did not it didn't install correctly it like mm. stopped in the middle of installing so i couldn't play it um but yeah no steam deck is has become one of my favorite consoles i love the steam deck yeah. so uh i'm happy that more people will get to experience it and it's crazy that they're giving away one a minute yeah so i guess watch the game awards on steam if you can and leave a tab open and also watch it on twitch because that's probably i'm gonna be streaming during the game awards so watch me how about that and i'll give something away too because i'm fucking giving away everything yeah all look time. at that oh, yeah, <laughs> twitch.tv slash wolf then if you are listening to this and you're upset you're not part of the giveaway just go to twitch.tv slash wolf then click the notification so you know when i go live and join another giveaway this month how there about that you, there you go also we're gonna have giveaways that the podcast listeners can join uh later how about that suck on that <laughs> so you don't even need twitch anyway uh where are we now uh here here's something we talked before about waiting for like you know to play games for maybe like the game of the year edition where it comes with everything. Sure. Here's a game that doesn't deserve a game of the year edition. Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk 2077 will be re-released with a game of the year edition. Who's game of the year? Uh, as you might expect, this package will include next year's uh, paid for Phantom Lady expansion as well as all other free updates released so far. The announcement of Cyberpunk 2077's Game of the Year Edition package has raised some eyebrows considering the game's state and the year it was launched, although the Game of the Year Edition branding has now been so overused, it should hardly come as a surprise. Um, it's a natural order of things, CG Project Red President Adam uh, Kinsnick, uh, Kaninsky said. Um, it was the same with The Witcher, which after both expansions was finally released as a Game of the Year edition and has been on the market uh, that same that way ever since. The same can be expected uh, in this case. The inclusion of Phantom Liberty, uh, which will skip last-gen consoles to only arrive on PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S, means the upcoming Cyberpunk uh, Game of the Year edition will be limited to those platforms as well. Phantom Liberty is confirmed to be the only major expansion in the cards for uh, Cyberpunk before CD Projekt Red moves on to the game's full-blown sequel. The expansion is set to take uh, players into an all-new district of Night City for a fresh story described as a spy thriller. Details are thin, although fans will be able to enjoy more Keanu Reeves as Johnny Silverhand. So I saw some. I saw this a few weeks ago, and I didn't uh, put it, bring it up then. But I figured this is an equivalent story. Uh, Far Cry Six is also getting a Game of the Year edition. Okay. And that game was nobody's game of the year. Either. That <laughs> that was like the worst reviewed Far Cry game in, in like a decade. Right. It really is shocking that Game of the Year doesn't mean anything anymore. No, it's the player's choice. They should just call it player's choice. Yeah. Player's choice well, player's choice name. is actually a Nintendo thing. What was the Nintendo? Oh, greatest hits. No, no, that was Sony. Nintendo. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Nintendo, like, they're like, you know, budget line was called player's choice. And then they eventually called the Nintendo select. I'm thinking greatest hits. Yeah. Greatest, greatest hits, is, hits is probably a better idea. Yeah. Cause that means like that, that implies more that it just sold a lot. Yeah. Or, uh, Mortal Kombat 2009, no, not 2009, 2011, Mortal Kombat 2011, their Game of the Year edition wasn't called Game of the Year edition, it was called The Complete Collection. Co well, with a K, With right? a K, obviously, but, the, the, or uh, Mortal Kombat X, that was called Mortal Kombat XL. 
extra large. Complete edition also makes sense. But yeah. uh, I kind of like greatest hits because it implies that it's uh, like on sale or something. Well, yeah, the, the Sony budget line is called the, the greatest hits collection. Right. So they probably can't call it that. But right. yeah, there are, there are other things you can call it other than, you know, game of the year. Because, you know, I remember th this is dating me. But do you remember when we used to get Chinese food from that one restaurant that was next to Staples when we were kids? Yes. And we would uh, go. This place would call our our mom every week to say, hi, hello, Kathy. We got crab legs. <laughs> yes. And then she'd go, all right, all thank right, you so we'll much. We'll be right there. So, and, then, and then we stopped going there and they kept calling. Yes. And then she felt really but, bad. Well, when we would go. Mm -hmm. We were, you know, we didn't want to wait in the Chinese restaurant, so we would run to Staples, and they had a very small PC section. True. And they had they had some this. games, and the one that always stuck out to me was Half Life One, because right on the box it said it had a big sticker that said "Winner of over fifty Game of the Year awards." And that was the first time I ever saw that, and I remember thinking, "Wow, this game must be good if it won fifty Game of the <laughs> Year awards." But it was. It was. It yeah, Half Life One was incredible. Of a lot of games yes, of the year awards. But now, every fucking game is a game of the year edition if yeah. you if you try really hard. Yeah. So it's just. But also, there's so many people that could give you a box quote. True. So like any game. Could so just... like if if some random newspaper in Idaho. Yeah, gives gives us a game of the year award. Yeah, then it, oh, you can you can qualify as game you can of the year. Add edition. that to the fifty. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. It just again, if you had if you waited to play Cyberpunk, this is the version to get because it will have everything. Um, I've heard that they fixed a lot. I know. I I was looking forward to playing it again, but then they pulled this shit of the DLC not coming to previous gen consoles, and now I'm very mad at them. Yeah, I don't know if it's like fixed, fixed. I mean, but I'm I heard sure, that they fixed a lot of stuff. I'm sure it's, you know, substantially better than I, the last I played that game. The one every time I tried to pull out my one machine gun, it would just like glitch. Yeah. So I honestly didn't have a lot of performance issues when I played it. When yeah. I played it at launch, I just didn't like the type of game it was. Right. I I was like getting into it, but I was having a lot of performance issues. Mm -hmm. So I was playing on an Xbox One S, so that might have been my problem. There was a good quote from this streamer called Northern Lion uh -huh. who said uh, he's not into a lot of AAA stuff because, mm -hmm. like, you know, something like Cyberpunk, and I feel this very much. Yeah. The, the, the game is basically like, oh, Johnny Silverhand, what are we going to do on this mission? All right, what you're going to do is you're going to go into this bank and you're going to shoot 70 guys in the head, and then you're going to go over to this briefcase and you're going to hold E. And then 70 guys are going to come and you're going to shoot them all in the head. Right. And then you're going to leave exactly the way you came in and shoot 70 guys in the head. <laughs> or what are we going to do after that? Okay, then we're going to go into this other place and you're going to shoot 70 guys in the head. And yeah. Just on and on. And that's how I feel with a lot of AAA stuff. Yeah. That's why I just am completely jaded by everything. I get it. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to get that. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, so I have the game already. Yeah. If I wanted to play it, I'd just fucking play it. Yeah. We'll we'll see if I ever go back to it or not. Who knows? I'm very confused by this next story. Oh, you mean Toe Jam and Earl movie in the works from Amazon and basketball player Stephen Curry? This I, <laughs> I saw the article name. It just said Toe Jam and Earl movie. And yeah. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> then I click on it. And what this fuck is Steph Curry doing here? <laughs> the 1990 second video game Toe Jam and Earl is in the works as a feature film at Amazon Studios, also hailing from Stephen Curry's unanimous media and story kitchen. Toe Jam and Earl, created by Mark Vorsanger and Greg Johnson, centers on two space alien rappers uh, who come to Earth seeking a cure for the disease, eradicating their home planet's rhythm, funk, and groove. Uh, the synopsis for the project continues. Earth, their legends tell... Earth, their legends tell them, is the paradise where the music that created their culture originated. Unfortunately for our heroes, not only do they not only did they wreck their ship, but they find that Earth is well not the haven they expected. But the music, that part was true. So so begins their quest to find as much of that music as they can in hopes of saving their planet and maybe ours as well. 
Now a cult classic, Toe Jam & Earl became a hit video game upon its release in 1991, with a soundtrack pulling heavily from jazz, funk, and hip-hop. It was followed by two sequels, Toe Jam & Earl Panic on Funkatron, uh, also on Sega Genesis, and Toe Jam & Earl 3 Mission to Earth on the original Xbox. Um, also, Toe Jam & Earl Back in the Groove, which was a Kickstarter game for a couple of years ago, released on modern consoles. They did not include that. This is shoddy journalism. Uh, Amos Vernon and Nunzio Randazzo, we might be related to him, uh, the writers behind Hotel Transylvania 4 and the upcoming Disney Plus uh, Super Fudge series will pen the screenplay. Story Kitchen's Dimitri M. Johnson and Dan uh, Genvis of Sonic the Hedgehog will produce with Unanimous's Curry and Eric Payton. With Story Kitchens on Mike Goldberg co-producing, Story Kitchens, Timothy I. Stevenson, Unanimous's uh, Janelle Lindsay, and Vorsanger and Johnson will receive uh, executive producer credits. So, Steph Curry just owns part of the company, right? Yes. Okay, that's why he's the guy in the top of the article. Yes. Uh, Story Kitchen, I, just, I, I was... Clicking on that to see what the hell is going on here. Yeah. Uh, they seem, it seems like guys who helped start John Wick and Sonic. Yeah. Are involved, like the movie Sonic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I guess it's got some big Hollywood names involved. I kind of understand the idea of taking an IP like Toe Jam and Earl and trying to make it a movie. I don't, but keep going. <laughs> Because the IP is, is, think about like Sonic. Yeah. I mean, Sonic's a much bigger example. Yes. But Sonic is such a great IP. The IP has carried it through treacherous times. Yes. It's been horrible being a Sonic it fan. It really the past has 10 been, years. yeah. But they made a movie, and the movie was pretty good. Yeah. Because you know what? The character is so important to people, and uh, that's enough to carry a franchise. Yeah. And I think Toe Jam and Earl is a it is like it's hard it's hard to say this <laughs> it's, it, it, it's very popular for no reason <laughs> game's not good it is a very specific kind of game for a very specific era and a very specific um fan base that i don't think is enough to make any sort of profit on but i think that the characters and the idea around it is enough to make a good movie that's what i think yeah i guess because it is very interesting the whole concept of these two weird ass aliens who are really into like funky music <laughs> going around um i don't know man i feel like look i'm not going to be upset that a sega genesis game is getting a movie right uh i think they were do they were doing streets of rage also some company is doing a Streets of Rage movie. So it makes no sense to make a movie out of Toe Jam and Earl if we're going by popularity. Right. But they have to, you know, Hollywood has to come up with ideas, you know. Yeah. And this is an idea that was already came up with. So make a fucking movie. Yeah, I, don't know. I, I know. Like it's make just... it a Guardians of the Galaxy movie. You know what I mean? True. Yeah. It is just, it is, uh, it's a weird, wacky time we're living in where oh, we're, yes. get, we're getting a toe jam in our own. Do you remember those memes that came out when it's like Marvel made a movie with a talking raccoon and tree, but di uh, Warner Brothers can't make a Wonder Woman movie because they think people can't handle women superheroes? Yes. yes. <laughs> so we're currently living in a world where Sega is gearing up for a toe jam in our own movie, but Nintendo can't make a Legend of Zelda movie because people can't handle elves. <laughs> yes. Uh, I did see, uh, we don't have an article about how, uh, yeah, so uh, Shazam, not Shazam. Black Adam. Black Adam uh, might not make its money back because yeah. it needs to make $600 million to yes. make its money back. And I saw a tweet that was like, I don't know, I'm not a big shot Hollywood executive, <laughs> but if I were them, I wouldn't have expected to make $600 million off of an offshoot of Shazam. Yeah. Well, I, I, I've been like, you know, saying this from the, like I tweeted, maybe turning a secondary character to a relatively obscure superhero into a $200 million vanity project was a bad idea. Yeah. So. So what we're saying is spend two to $600 million on Toe Jam and Earl and see what happens. Yeah. I think Shazam only cost like $90 million to make. Like for for a modern superhero movie, that's tiny. Yeah. 
Yeah. And like they used that money well and it became profitable. They just don't need that much money to make a good movie. No. They really don't. How much did the Batman cost? I'm sure that was a lot of money. It probably cost a lot of money. Doesn't look like it cost a lot of money though. <laughs> well, I know they they actually filmed a lot of that on uh the volume that big dome of TVs that they filmed the Mandalorian on. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Like the car chases were all filmed filmed in that. They did a really good job of masking that. Yeah. It's because the lenses were shitty. Yeah. They felt uh, like broken, shitty 185 lenses. to $200 million. All right. Bad example. Bad example. In, in, the, in its defense, though, it's a long fucking movie. It's a very <laughs> so. long movie. Uh, Sui Kagura says half of the $600, $600 million budget is marketing cost, though. That's still a cost. Yeah. That still counts. So the traditional thinking is that there's... There's the cost of the movie, and then there's marketing. And marketing genuinely costs the same as the cost of the movie. Mm -hmm. So say Black Adam was $200 million. That means they spent $200 million in marketing. That means the movie had to have made $400 million just to break even. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it needed to make $800 million to get any sort of a good profit. That's why movies that don't cost that don't make a billion dollars at the box office are considered failures now. Because they spend all this money making their shitty movies and they need to make it all back within a month in theaters otherwise it's considered a failure. Yeah. But what they're not saying not to go off about Black Adam what they're not talking about really is that the movie was put on like iTunes and Vudu and Amazon for like purchase and rent. A month after it came out in theaters and people didn't go to the movies to see it then. They were waiting and seeing. So they just watched it from the comfort of their own home. Yeah. And it, it's doing relatively well there. Yeah. So maybe don't do that if you need your movie to make a lot of money. Also, if a movie that costs $600 million, mm -hmm. all things considered. Yeah. If it makes $601 million. That's still a million dollars. Yeah. You know? like, we're talking about huge numbers here. Yeah. So like, you know, they're dumping a lot of money into it. It might, you know, be worth it. Yeah. I don't know how these things work. Hollywood accounting is notoriously weird and complex and doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Right. So, yeah. Anyway. Toe Jam and Earl. Look forward to it. Billion dollars. More money than Avatar. <laughs> uh, Avatar. I don't understand. I don't understand that at all. I don't understand how it was so popular. That fucking sucked, that movie. Okay, okay. I will... I will. St this is what I say about Avatar. I will defend the first Avatar movie. I think the first Avatar movie was a good movie. Why? I think it was... Yes, it was, the story was overly simplistic, but it wasn't about the particulars of the story. It was about creating this fanciful world of Pandora and creating a whole, like, ecosystem and mythology around it. And, like... James Cameron's a very good director, so even with the shittiest story, he's very good at like drawing you in and making yeah. you understand and care about what's happening on screen. That's so Avatar One. I will stand by that movie, even with that. I do not understand how you can make more Avatar movies. Yeah, <laughs> I don't see where this can go. Right. He he already filmed two and three. He has oh. scripts for three and four. For sorry, he has scripts for four and five. I didn't know he filmed two and. Three. He's filmed two and three at the same time. He has scripts for four and five. So, but he has said if two doesn't do well, then they'll just release three, and that's it. I'm. It just boggles my mind because that <sighs> movie was so much bigger than it had any right. Being. It really was, yeah. If people are so interested in this world, why hasn't there been anything else? There was the theme park in Disney. People really like that. I didn't even know that. It yeah, Worlds of Pandora and Animal Kingdom. Apparently, it's like awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think part of it too is like he spends like ten years making these movies. Avatar two was supposed to come out in like 2015, mm. and the first movie came out in 2009. I mean, the biggest deal was the technology and the 3D stuff. Yes, and that sucked. <laughs> 3D was stupid. Well, 3D was stupid when other people did it. <laughs> no, I'm serious because like. Like, again, James Cameron, a very good director. He built the cameras themselves. So he knew, like, what it took to make a 3D camera and how to film things properly in 3D. Other movies at the time just used a regular-ass camera 
and converted it to 3D in post. And that's a very shitty thing. Yeah, no, that sucked. Yeah, but the only movies that were good in 3D were movies that were filmed in 3D, like Avatar, like Tron Legacy, and Jackass 3D. I think that... Uh, I forgot about Jackass 3D. Yeah. I think that... Uh, it just sucked watching movies in 3D. It didn't. It I, did. Like it like, was better, but I did. It, I don't think it made. I don't. It didn't knock my socks off. I watched Avatar again on HBO when it came out on TV, and I'm like, it's the same movie. Yeah. I didn't need to put that on. Yeah. But like I said, like point being, like Avatar, it's a good movie. It is not a franchise good movie. Although maybe I'll be wrong because people like early uh, talk of this one is that it's also very good. Okay. Which maybe it is good. But again, I don't know if it's five movies good. Yeah. All right. The last news we have here is something I saw. Google's Modable Doodle. Yes. Honors the father of the video game cartridge. Yes. Uh, the Google Doodle altered and sometimes interactive logo for the search engine's homepage for December 1st was a tribute to Jerry Lawson, the computer engineer credited with developing the first cartridges for a console video game almost 50 years ago. Not only does the Doodle let folks play a f play five DMake style video games, it even lets users edit and mod them. The Doodle begins with a short tour of Law of Lawson's life and accomplishments. Uh, he would have turned 80 82 on Thursday. Then players are shown how to edit the Doodle's games. Four of them are puzzle platformer side scrollers, and one is a breakout clone. Uh, Google put together a short documentary video on Lawson's life, which includes commentary from Lawson's son, as well as the three developers behind the doodle, all of whom are black. Lawson was one of Silicon Valley's first black computer engineers. There's a, there's a picture of him holding his son upside down by the ankle. <laughs> <laughs> Lawson was one of Silicon Valley's first black uh, computer engineers and uh, was honored for his career and achievements in 2011 by the International Game Developers Association one month before he, uh, he died. Uh, Gerald Jerry Lawson was born December 1st, uh, 1940 in Brooklyn, New York, and developed an interest in electronic and electrical engineering early in life, repairing televisions and building an amateur radio at age 13. Um, in, 19, in 1976, Fairchild uh, launched the Channel F, the first video game console to use swappable ROM cartridges rather than having the games encoded into the unit itself. The cartridge-based approach was Lawson's idea. His other innovations include the Channel F's 8-position joystick, which also included a pause button, both firsts for console gaming. The Channel F preceded the Atari VCS, aka the 2600, by one year, although VCS outsold it roughly 3 to 1, by uh, 1979, when Fairchild sold the technology to Zykron International. So, so, so he pioneered a lot of stuff we use today. Yes. In video games. The video yes. games would not be the same. Without I think it is, uh, most importantly, the, the interchangeable cartridge right. mechanic. Because, like the article said, games used to be just baked into the system. You buy one game. You buy one system for one game. Yeah. And he figured out how you can remove the game and put in another game in the system. And this became the basis for video games to this day. Yeah. Because the Switch uses it, the Vita used it, the DS, the N64, on and on and on. Even if you want to get technical, disc-based systems still follow the same principle. There was a very short period of time where video games were going to be t television stations. Yes. They weren't going to be cartridges. Yes. That is a terrifying thing to think about. Yes. That ended up working out because the TV is completely obsolete now. Yeah. There's no reason for us to have that. We wouldn't own any of the games. Then. Yeah. It would be. Oh, no, exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's the fear of people who uh, who don't like uh, digital media. Yeah. They'd rather have the physical stuff. Yeah. He's this is the reason why you have a giant collection in your house. Yes. Um. So I just thought I thought this was. A cute little article to include. I also felt it was important because uh, we are we are fans of video games. And yes. I feel like as fans, it's also important to know a little bit of the history behind the thing you're a yeah. fan of to give you context and idea of like where it came from. And I feel like Jerry Lawson's contributions often get overlooked because he worked on the fucking Fairchild Channel F. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, you know, and also too, like the article said, He's black and 
you know, African American, you know, computer engineers are were a rarity back then and they're not very common now. So to have such an important figurehead, you know, such such an important figure in the history of games being African American is something that should be mentioned more often and his contributions to gaming should be brought up more often. Also the doodle is sick. Like it's oh, basically yeah. Mario Maker. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So it's worth checking out. You can check out past doodles too. This came yeah. out on December 1st. Yeah. Uh, which was his birthday. Yes. Uh, born in 1940. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I don't know. I guess you could probably just fucking Google it. Yeah. Just Google the Google yes. Doodle. <laughs> um, all right. I think that's it. Yeah. I think that's all that we have here. So, you know what it's time for. So, let's see if this works. I don't know. Word of the week! Word of the week! Hey. Word of the week! It worked. Yay. All right. Now, this one took me a second. Let's okay. see if you can get it. Do you have it on screen right now? I'm getting it now. Yeah. Let me know. Now, this one is going to cause some fights. You've heard of Elf on the Shelf. Now, get ready for <laughs> What is it? Aristotle on Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you say it like that, it's a bit of a head scratch. It is. Aristotle on a Chipotle. Yeah. <laughs> It's, I was like, who is that? It can't be Aristotle. See, you said Aristotle on Chipotle. I was thinking uh, Aristotle on Chipotle. <laughs> I was like, is that Caesar? Like, I don't understand. I know. It's... And then this is, this. That, well, speaking of that, in the replies, you've heard of Elf on the Shelf, now get ready for Caesar in a freezer. <laughs> that one's not as good. Yeah. Our father calls Chipotle Chipotle. Yes. Which is a... Very unique one. Yes. Uh, I do know somebody who calls it Chipotle. He also pronounces the archive level in Goldeneye archives. And I want to hit him because I used to play Goldeneye at his house oh, when we were no. kids. So he should know better. Now, we never really played a lot of Halo. No. All my friends played a lot of Halo. Yeah. And they used to call the vehicle in Halo, the car, the Warth Hog. <sighs> so... I thought it was the Warthog. No. Because I'm just learning vicariously through them until I saw it written. And then I was like, wait, that says Warthog? I was like, in the game, they must say Warthog. No, they my s- friends are just all stupid. Because <laughs> it was at least three of them that called it the Warthog. Yeah. Man. I also I, got it, flamed for calling it a Hydukin. It It's... How I, need see it, I need to see it written now. It's I also hot. called it Ryu. I used to call him Ryu all the time, which is very That's funny. not your fault, though, because all the media, like the, the cartoon in the movie called, called him Ryu. So that was teaching us how to say the, the character's okay. name. All right, I'll, I'll that, that's not that. your fault. It, it is, wasn't until years later we learned it was Ryu. It is Hadoken. Hadoken. The high just isn't anywhere yeah there's no reason for high. also too like back then digitized voice and gaming like not great true so like it, they were That's saying true. it through, he kind of sounds like he's saying hi Doka. it was like said through static yeah so it was like hard to hear we're lucky we got hi Dukin. yeah <laughs> good point um all right now we will talk to you people yes first we will talk to people who left a comment on last week's wolf them podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So don't forget we're doing a giveaway. Yeah. Uh, we're going to draw the winner at 10 o'clock. Uh, type an exclamation point giveaway if you haven't already. If you have already, you'll Stop. just get banned. <laughs> um, where am I? Oh, Discord. And if you're upset because you're listening to this, uh, next week we'll yeah. be doing some giveaways. So don't don't you worry. You'll get your opportunity. Uh, here I go here and then I go here oh what is this I can't get on discord via desktop so here's screenshots of the comments okay uh, Fred just gave a screenshot yeah. this time alright we'll see uh, Daniel Gervasi says the studio setup is looking good Bobby if you guys still answer questions from the YouTube comments in the prior week I wanted to ask if you were thinking of setting up a drum kit now that you've got a bigger place I considered it. Oh, yeah? I do not have any room. <laughs> I really did consider it, though. There was one place, there was one house I looked at. Yeah. 
that had a lot of space in the living room. And okay. I was like, I'm putting a drum set in the living room. I feel like you can fit a drum set in your living room right now. We have it. We're going to get a. We don't have a table. Right. We're no, not, a, not like where the TV is, like right. in the middle, like in, the, in a corner somewhere. Maybe. You can, I've been seeing. I am getting an arcade cabinet. Yes, so I know that's that. It's going to take up a lot of room. I've been seeing like it's this is like really popular and common now uh electric drum kits that are like set up like acoustic ones. Oh, okay. So like you can do like you could do everything you could on a regular drum kit, but it goes to headphones. So yeah. you don't bother anybody. So the uh the old studio I was at, the mm-hmm. one we still film the podcast at, where I sat is now a drum set. <laughs> It is a uh, an acrylic DW. It is very nice. Oh, that is nice. I didn't have the heart to tell them I hate acrylic kids. <laughs> um, Eddie Yoshi says every time they come out with a new trailer or a poster for the Mario movie, I can't believe it's real. Especially the poster, like it looks like one of those fake fan made. Imagine if this game got a movie post. You see, it's true. It is true. It is wild. We're getting a Super Mario Brothers movie that looks like this. Yeah. It is as close as you can get to like what a Super Mario movie should be visually. I have to say I give it a lot of flack because I don't like Chris Pratt's voice. Right. But I like 90% of the stuff that I see. Yeah. So I don't, I really don't. I, I think it's going to be good. So yeah, I'm sure it'll. Aside yeah. from that, I think the rest of it will carry it. Um, Timothy Kelly says, I don't think they're changing it. What? I don't think they're changing it. Think this is like his training phase to learn how this world works. He can't just walk in this world he's never been in and be a badass. That would make even less sense. Come on, common sense. They're, we're talking about how we saw in the trailer like Mario sucked. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't like Super Mario like we expected him to be. Yeah, uh, yeah, obviously. I, look, I think that... I yeah. understand that. I never said it wasn't like that. No, I had a problem with that. Oh, okay. You know, I understand that, like, this is, like, his first time here, and he's, like, got to learn the ropes and stuff, but if that's the whole movie, like, do I want to see that? Like, I want to see Mario be Mario. I don't want to yeah. see him, like, learn how to be Mario for 90 minutes or however long the runtime is. Make it a quick 15-minute montage, and let's move on. Yeah, there's two issues I have with that. One is that uh, why doesn't Peach just save it? Then yeah. save the world. You know, she's the fucking queen, yeah. the princess. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, the other problem is uh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> like, I hate. I don't hate origin stories, but like a character as big as Mario, every single story we've ever seen of Mario is he's just there already. Yes. You know? Yeah. So what's wrong with that? Mm-hmm. It's worked countless times before. Yeah. Just do that again. And I mean, at this point, everybody knows who he is. Yeah. So you're not like really introducing new fans to Super Mario Brothers. You're introducing people who already know about Super Mario Brothers. And, and there's superhero movies that are getting rid of the whole origin. They're yeah. Just going for it. And yeah. you know what? They're fantastic. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Uh... Benjamin Isaac says, if you pour the nitro Pepsi into a cup, the foam is on the top. They actually recommend pouring it into a glass. It's printed on the can. That's a good idea. I didn't uh-huh. try that. Now I have to buy more. Okay. I haven't tried it. Uh, and the last one is Colin Nolan, who says, Will hating on Mario needing to adjust from being a plumber to being zapped into the Mushroom Kingdom and Peach being a strong, confident badass who lives there and used to be and and used to this bullshit. This is going back to what I said, you know. Yeah, I don't think you had a problem with Peach. Not necessarily. I, it w- it would have been more of a problem if it's called the Super Mario Brothers movie, but Peach is the one to save the day. Yeah, you know, because like when you call it the Super, you have certain expectations going in. Right. It, it's like it's like one of my problem problems with Iron Man three is that the end, and I like Iron Man three, but the end of the movie. He doesn't. Sp- he doesn't fight the bad guy in a suit. He fight. He fights the, bat- the main bad guy mostly out of suit. Yeah. And Pepper winds up defeating him. Like, I, I now, just this was my biggest issue with the end of the first season of Mob Psycho. <laughs> it made me. It made me 
I loved that series until the very last episode, the very end of it. I was like, everything that just happened yeah. was fucking worthless because of how this <laughs> ended. And it made me not want to watch the second season. Right. I mean, I guess I should really clarify because this is just making me look like a sexist lunatic who like doesn't like women on Twitter oh, or whatnot. Oh, I hit a button. Oh, I hit a button. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, we're back. Um, Like Peach being a badass and competent and able to like hold her own in a fight and stuff, that's not necessarily the problem. The problem is, like, you call it the Super Mario Brothers movie. We expect to see Mario do awesome things. If you're going to, like I said before, if you're going to spend most of the movie having him suck, why would I go see your movie? I could just play the video game. Yeah. A good example is, like, Batman Begins. Like, that's his first mission. He makes mistakes, but he's still competent. Yeah. Like, he know, like he knows what he's doing. He learns from his mistakes and immediately jumps back in and, like, fixes them. So, like, if they took that approach, that's one thing. I just think it's weird for for Mario because we've never seen this before. I think it's weird for the, the first full trailer to focus so much on him failing. Right, that's true. And he getting his ass kicked. Yeah, he doesn't show he's a badass at all. No. Not, the, even, not even once in the The trailer. closest we get is him doing the power slide in the Mario Kart yeah. scene and going, wahoo. He might just be worthless the whole time until the end. Okay, but then that's, that's not Mario. That's Hong Kong Fooey. That's not Super Mario. That's just Mario. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, I never said thank you to Still Bald in the chat. Thank you for the six months. Keep up the good work, boys. Thank you. And Majin Jameson for the five months. Uh, now we are in the chat. Hello, everybody. Hello. KJAX says, Bob, the Roland TK27KV or the TD50KV2. The drums are really nice. Uh, I'm not getting an electric kit. <laughs> I'm not going down that road. Okay. My roommate got one in our old apartment. Yeah. And, uh, no. I don't. <laughs> uh, M Skeleton says, but can we get back to surprising us with the tweet of the week intros? Kind of getting lazy. <laughs> it takes me a second to do it. Yeah. I need to get a a little switcher thing. I I got something in the works. Metascension says, any Xmas gifts? Any Xmas gifting tips for people that are difficult to shop for, like parents or relatives that don't share your interests? Yeah, gift cards. Yeah, Amazon gift cards. I am asking everybody to give me Amazon gift cards this year. Or uh, food delivery gift cards. Mm-hmm. If that's a little hard because you got to know which ones they use. But I mean, everybody uses Uber Eats. You can kind of guess. I have many friends who are anti-food delivery services. Like straight up. It's different so, if you're closer to the city. I guess, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. like I, I told my friends, like I'm ordering something and having it delivered to my house. And they were like, you do that? Our family was that. Our family refused to get delivery. That's ever. true. Yeah. Yeah. They would go, you know. Yeah. Let, slow, let me tell you something. Sleep. Having kids during a pandemic makes you makes you really appreciate, it, you know, that ten dollar service charge. And it's also different when like it's your own money versus a gift card. Mm-hmm. Like if somebody gifts you a hundred dollars in Uber Eats, like yeah. it suddenly that ten dollar surcharge isn't really a big deal. And then yeah. it feels great when it's freaking when you're busy or it's snowing yeah. out or something. To order a bunch of food for the family. So, um, hey, Cosmic Anime, thanks for the raid. Uh, I always just say, I used to do gift guides, you know, for like yeah. for like video games and stuff. And I always said in the very beginning, the best gift is just gift cards because, like, I don't recommend buying a game for somebody. Yeah. Because they're gonna know what they want, so buying them like an eShop card or something like that is gonna be a lot easier for them to figure out what they want. Um. Anyway, so anti-food delivery is so much more expensive. It is a lot more expensive. Being anti-food? No, delivery? he's saying he's saying that he's so anti-food delivery. It's so much. Oh more expensive. yeah, no, it's gotten really bad. Yeah. No, yeah, no, it's awful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Irv says I wouldn't mind, but I do look at that ten dollar delivery fee and just go get Chinese takeout. I I actually got delivery last week because I didn't feel like going out, and I checked between pickup and delivery, and it was like ten extra dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, it's that Grubhub Plus that I got through Amazon Prime, so that serv- that fee is taken out. The Grubhub fee. But there's still like service fees and tips and like a donation yeah. to like charity and it's shit. It's fucking expensive. Yeah. But 
when I lived in Brooklyn, there was I would get food delivery from places that would take me thirty to forty five minutes to get to. Yeah, it would be at my doorstep in like ten minutes because yeah. people were driving to bring it to me. Yeah, so it kind of was worth it sometimes. Um, but no, I don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. I got a rice cooker. There you go. That's Her all name you need. is Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> hey -o. Hey. Anyway, uh, uh. I'm reading more stuff from the yeah. Chat. I'm like, don't forget exclamation point giveaway if you haven't yet. You can yeah. give it away. We're gonna give away a hundred dollars in three minutes. Uh, mini memes. If it's possible, I try to order directly from the restaurant's website versus using Uber Eats or other services, so they make a little more. That's true too. If you Google the establishment, Google will tell you the restaurant's preferred way yes. of ordering. Yeah. So I've done that a couple times if the place is close. Yeah. Was there a sponsor for the giveaway? Yeah, Bob Wolf. <laughs> I'm, I'm using my own money. I, yeah. I was going to start the sponsored giveaway today, but they, and it's kind of been my fault that it's been taking so long. Until uh -huh. today, they said we have to put things on hold. So now it is officially <laughs> their fault. Uh, but hopefully next time, there will be a big, there's going to be a lot. There's going to be a lot. Oh boy. Of, I'm oh very boy. Excited. There's a lot of yeah. things being given away. <laughs> Um, will any interest in Midnight Suns? Uh, no, I've heard it's I've heard it's not bad. I've heard it's a little bit different. It's supposed to be XCOM with Marvel heroes, and I heard it's like different enough from XCOM, but still in that same vein. Uh, so that is nowhere up my alley. <laughs> but uh, I've heard it's better than Gotham Knights, so at least there's that. The Jaken says I drive for DoorDash as my side hustle. I love that people are lazy. <laughs> Good. I one time my. This is before our son was born. My wife is out doing her thing. My daughter was in bed, and I really wanted Carvel. So I got Carvel delivered to the house. Wow. $20 for a medium Carvel with Reese's on it. That's a lot. That is a lot. But I you needed it. I needed it. I needed my ice cream right that minute. <laughs> I, one time, I think it was 4th of July, and I decided, hey, guys, we're getting a fudgy the whale. <laughs> <laughs> and I was in my Brooklyn apartment and I ordered I it was on Carvel was on there. Yeah. I was like, oh that's awesome. I'm getting a fudgy wheel out the way. Yeah. And I ordered it. And then the, the driver when it was delivered called me and said, Hey, I'm outside the house. And I was yeah. like, House? What are you talking about? House. Oh, you had it delivered to I had it delivered to my friend Ian and Heather's house. Oh. Because I was there like the week before <laughs> and I was looking at food to get. Yeah. And I was like, just leave it on the doorstep. <laughs> and then I called them and I was like, hey, are you home? And they're like, no. And I was, I was like, are you going to be home soon? They're like, yeah, in 10 minutes. I was like, enjoy your fudgy the whale. <laughs> it was like 50 bucks and I got them a fudgy Oh, wow. <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, hey, it's 10 o'clock. Oh, do it, do it. Who wins? All right, we're going to roll this thing. It's actually a little, well, you haven't experienced this yet. I have it's not. It's actually pretty cool. Check okay. this. Check this out. What am I doing? Oh, where, okay. where am I looking? Uh, you might not even be able to see it. Okay. You'll hear it though. Okay. I'm closing Discord. Here it is. Uh, we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna run this. It's very loud. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I know this one. Yeah. It's from uh, Mighty Number no. 9, right? There you go. That's the one. <laughs> and the winner is... Oh! Psyker! There you go. Psyker. Psyker. Now, you have to be in the chat. You have to respond right now or else uh, you're dead. Say something in the chat. Say something. Or else you don't win. You have 24 seconds. Where are you? Hey. There he is. Cool. All right. Nice. There you go. Congratulations. Uh, all right. I will uh, DM you. I will whisper you. Keep your Twitch open at the end of this. I will whisper you uh, after the show so that I could uh, give you whatever you want. Uh, all right. Thanks for being here, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for 
any reason at all. We always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfton Podcast, so you can go check us out over there on demand wherever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolfden Podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Hey, uh, I'll be live on Thursday with the Game Awards. Uh, Hopefully we'll do big time Happy Man giveaway. Uh, in the meantime, go watch AJ. I believe he is shiny hunting. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, so go say hello to AJ if you're here live. Uh, and if you're listening to the podcast, uh, come to Twitch sometime, you know? But also, uh, we'll do giveaways where you don't have to come to Twitch. Don't worry about it. Thanks for being here. We'll see you all later. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.